Sustainable antibiotic development and international collaboration are essential in the fight against antimicrobial resistance. Ongoing innovation and policy change are also key to ensuring pharmaceutical investment in new antimicrobials can continue. We spoke to industry and infectious disease experts to understand more about how the issue is being addressed. It was in this room almost 100 years ago that the scientist Alexander Fleming first discovered penicillin. It marked the beginning of the era of antibiotics and revolutionised the field of medicine. But a century on and in an age of growing antimicrobial resistance, there's a real need for new antibiotic discoveries. So it was here in the Alexander Fleming Laboratory Museum that I met Hugh Tippett from Shinogi, a pharmaceutical company committed to playing its part to help advance the science and tackle AMR. Here at Shinogi we have over 70 years of research and development ex expertise in, in infectious disease. So it's, it's front and centre of what we do every day. We want to stay in the space and contribute to it for the future. We know that as many as 1.3 million people die every year as a result of AMR. And the World Health Organization itself has designated AMR as one of the most critical of its 10 threats to human health in the world. And nowhere is the challenge of AMR more acutely felt than on the front line of hospital care. What really worries me is when I see especially some of the really young patients who have just lived a few months of their lives, but because possibly they were in the hospital for a long time or they were exposed to a very severe infection that was resistant to start with, I do not have options to give them to be able to cure them effectively. And that is what keeps me up at night. Researching and developing new treatments, though, that then have to be used sparingly to avoid exacerbating AMR, isn't always financially attractive. So Shinogi is one of just a few companies that have collaborated with the NHS in a first-of-its-kind subscription agreement to delink volume from sales. Effectively, what that did was to reward companies for the innovation that we bring to the space based on the, the value that's estimated that we'll bring to the NHS. So that is a very smart way of reimbursing products rather than the traditional way, which is on volume, which we want to avoid because we really want to conserve these very critical products for the, for the right diseases. It's like having a fire extinguisher. You need it, you obviously hope that you won't have to use it, but it has to be there. And that's exactly how we have to think about antibiotics. Instead of linking the money that pharma would receive from their cells and the volume of antibiotics that are used, they are just compensated for the fact that these antibiotics are on the market. So it's a fabulous solution. But AMR is a challenge across the world and infection does not recognise borders. So Shinogi has led the industry in forging partnerships with non-governmental not-for-profit organisations to help drive equitable access to its antibiotic in low- and middle-income countries, as well as support responsible manufacturing. We've signed an agreement with GARDP, the, the Global Antibiotic Research and Development uh, Partnership. Uh, we're in the process of handing over the technical rights of our product and they'll be able to make our product available to patients in these markets. Andreas Karras, who leads the medical team at Shinogi, used to be a doctor and infection specialist in South Africa. And he told me why the company believes partnership working will make a real difference in low- and middle-income countries. The need is huge. And if you look at countries who've really had problems with AMR, the work that some of these NGOs are doing around collecting the data on resistance and working with us on how to manufacture the drugs, the antibiotics, is the way forward. So it's got to be a, a combined effort of pharma companies, governments, NGOs, working together across all countries to make this happen and to try and solve this problem. We've come a long way in modern medicine since Fleming's discovery of penicillin. But new discoveries, partnerships and collaborations are needed now more than ever 
if the gains in the fight against infection are to continue.